In this question, we're given a description of a reaction. We're told that chlorine reacts with calcium oxide to produce calcium chloride and oxygen. Our goal is to write a balanced equation for this reaction. So first we're going to need to actually figure out what the formulae are for each of these things. Then we're going to be able to balance our equation. Okay, so let's start with chlorine here. Let's find it in our periodic table. Chlorine is here. So that shows us chlorine is in group 17. Since it's in group 17, that means it has seven valence electrons. Chlorine is also a non-metal. And chlorine is also one of those non-metals which is diatomic. So when it's found in its uh, raw state, instead of being a single chlorine atom found on its own, it forms a molecule with itself. And since it has seven valence electrons, it needs to gain one more valence electrons to have a full octet of eight. So it forms one covalent bond and it can actually form that bond with itself to form a Cl2 molecule. So chlorine is one of our diatomic atoms along with fluorine, bromine, iodine, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So anytime we have any of those seven elements on their own in our equation, we know they're gonna have a subscript two after them because they're this uh, diatomic molecule made of two uh, atoms together. So chlorine is gonna be Cl2. Okay, then we have calcium oxide. So let's go ahead and look in our periodic table again for calcium and oxygen. So calcium is over here and oxygen is here. So calcium is in group two and oxygen is in group 16. So calcium has two valence electrons and oxygen has six valence electrons. Calcium is a metal and oxygen is a non-metal. So calcium and oxygen are going to form an ionic compound together. And we know the charges on each of these ions based on the valence electrons. Calcium is going to uh, lose two electrons to form a Ca2 plus ion. Oxygen is going to gain two electrons to form an O2 minus ion. Then when we combine calcium and oxygen to form our ionic compound, we need to make sure that the net charge of our compound is going to be zero. Since we have the same charge on both, two plus on the calcium and two plus on the oxygen, we only need one of each in our formula in order for that to balance the charges because two plus and two minus cancel out to give us zero. So the formula of our ionic compound is just gonna be CaO. So calcium oxide is gonna be CaO. Okay, then that produces calcium chloride. So heading back to our periodic table, calcium again has two valence electrons. Chlorine has one valence electron. And again, calcium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal, so they're gonna form an ionic compound. Calcium is gonna have a charge of Ca2 plus because it's gonna lose two electrons to form its iron with the octet rule. Chlorine's gonna gain one electron and form a charge of Cl minus on its iron. Okay, so when calcium and chlorine form an ionic compound together, we need the net charge to be zero. So if we just had Ca, Cl, we'd have a charge of plus two on the Ca, a charge of minus one on the Cl, and overall the charge would still be positive because we don't uh, have enough negative to cancel it out. Instead, if we have two Cl's with a Cl2, that gives us two sets of one negative, which is two negatives. Plus we have one set of two positive, which is two positive. And the two negative and two positive would cancel each other out. So there's our formula for calcium chloride. It's CaCl2. 
Finally, for oxygen on its own, oxygen is group 16, meaning that it has six valence electrons. And again, oxygen is one of those non-metals that forms diatomic molecules. That means O2, because oxygen needs to gain two valence electrons to form a uh, full octet. So oxygen can form two covalent bonds and actually just forms these with itself. So there's our O2 molecule. Awesome. Okay, so we've done the tricky step, which is figuring out what all our formulae are, and we can fill those in. So we had Cl2 for chlorine. We had CaO for calcium oxide, CaCl2 for calcium chloride, and O2 for oxygen. Wonderful. Now we just need to balance it. So same as usual, I'm going to write out my equation again down here. I've got Cl2 plus CaO goes to CaCl2 plus O2. And again, I'm going to write out my a little table to help me make sure everything is balanced. And my elements are Cl, Ca, and O. Okay, so let's go ahead and count. So Cl, chlorine. To start with, we have Cl2. So that's two in the reactants. Afterwards, we have CaCl2. That's two in the products. For calcium, we initially have one in the CaO compound. Afterwards, we also have one in the CaCl2 compound. Oxygen, before we have CaO, so one there. Afterwards, we have O2. So we've got two oxygens afterwards. Okay, so we can see that so far the Cl's look like they're balanced, the Ca's look like they're balanced, but for the O, we don't have enough on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna add one on, more on the left-hand side. I'm gonna make that a two. That will give us two oxygens, which should balance there. So let's go ahead and recount. So I've got two chlorines on the left and two on the right. For calcium, I now have two on the left and one on the right. For oxygen, I now have two on the left and two on the right. So chlorine and oxygen are now looking good, but calcium isn't correct anymore because we've got two on the left and only one on the right. So I'm gonna have to add an extra calcium on the right. So I'm gonna add a two there and let's recalculate again. So in my reactants, I've got two chlorines. In my products, I now have two sets of Cl2. So I've got four chlorines on the right. For calcium, I've got two on the left and two on the right. For oxygen, I've got two on the left and two on the right. Okay, so now calcium and oxygen are looking good and chlorine is the one that we need more of in the reactants. And when we look at our equation, we can see chlorine is on its own here, Cl2. Adding one more of those will get us the two chlorines that we need. So we're gonna make this a two Cl2. And let's just add those up to check that that does finish off our balancing for us. So for chlorine, we've got Cl2 and we've got two of them. So that's two times two, which is four chlorines before. Afterwards, we've got two sets of CaCl2. That's two times two, which is four, looking good. Calcium, we've got two sets of CaO before. So that's two calcium. Afterwards, we've got two sets of CaCl2. So that's two CAs after. Oxygen, we've got two CaO before, so that's two oxygens. And afterwards, we have O2. That's two oxygens as well. Awesome, so it balances. We've got four chlorines before and after, two calciums before and after, and two oxygens before and after. So let's go ahead and enter our coefficients. We had two Cl2, two CaO, two CaCl2, and just one O2. And finally, let's just fill out our table to make sure that we got everything perfectly correct. Awesome. So you can see in this question, the balancing works exactly the same as all the other questions in the other skills in this unit. But first, you have to figure out which compounds you have using your knowledge from both the ionic compounds and covalent compounds unit. And that's what makes these questions a bit tricky.